I don't feel so good. Oh. Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Hot Toys action figure review on Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Movie Masterpiece MMS 436 Yondu Deluxe Version 1-6 scale collectible figure. If you're trying to pick this up, you can do so at Big, Big, Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And I gotta give a big thanks to Marvelous News for making this review possible. Check out MarvelousNews.com for the latest Marvel related news as well as the Marvelous News forums, link in the description below. And I do like the packaging for these Volume 2 Hot Toys figures, you can feel the texturing right here from the speaker, and then you get this little clear window with an awesome mix of Volume 2 right there, and then on the side you can see the Milano, and then on this side right here, uh, there's not much going on, just very shiny Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 text and you get all kinds of warning stuff, and then on this side you can see the spot varnished volume dial right there, on the very top it says Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and then on the bottom not much going on. And then we can do the Hot Toys plop. Bam. All right, there we go. That is a pretty good Hot Toys plop. And then on the inside right here, you can see all these circuits and everything and all the people responsible for creating the figure, including content. And then you can just flip this down and you can see the figure inside. So let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here is Yondu out of the packaging, looking awesome. I really dig this figure a lot. I've been waiting for it for a long time. I love Yondu, so I'm stoked to have him. But he looks great in figure form like this. I mean, this Hot Toys figure is very impressive. Just that trench coat alone is very impressive and the rest of the figure looks great too I love the accessories that it comes with. I love the textiles overall. We get a great head sculpt There's just a lot to like uh, again I did get the deluxe version So I do want to get a closer look at those accessories Then we'll take a look at the regular accessories and then finally we'll take a closer look at Yondu Udanta As always I recommend looking through the directions before playing with your very expensive hot toys figure You don't want to break anything. They're good directions too. So take a read. But anyway, these are the Deluxe accessories that we get with this Yondu figure. We get a cage for the little Groot, we get a gun for Rocket, and we get this jetpack slash arrow rig for Yondu. And this is the same arrow rig that we saw for the Star Lord figure. I think the paint apps are just slightly different, if anything. I don't have that Volume 2 Star Lord figure. I was borrowing that to review. This Yondu is definitely for me to keep, though. Uh, but the paint apps look really good. I really like that a lot. Nice gunmetal color, nice sculpted detail throughout on this. I like that. That looks really good. Nice details right over here. For some reason on the Star-Lord, I feel like there was just a little bit more exhaust effects or something in the paint. I could be wrong about that, but this looks really cool. I'm not going to demonstrate putting this on the Yondu figure right now. I'll save that till a little bit later. And then we get this nice looking gun for Rocket, which looks fantastic. I really dig that a lot. I don't know if I'm going to have him displayed with this over any of the other guns I already have for him though, but I still really like this a lot. This looks really cool. I like it. Wow, nice details on the inside right over there. And he holds it very easily. That I'll demonstrate rather quickly. Uh, you can just put this through uh, his right gun holding hand, and then you can put this through uh, his left gun holding hand. And it's not as quick and easy as I expected, but hey, there it is, and that looks really good. I like that. The tail did come off. I hate that the tail pops off that figure so easily. And then we get the cage for Groot, which looks awesome. I like this weathered detail. It looks very rusted, very realistic. It's very thin, though. I feel like if you just flicked it really hard with your finger, you could definitely bust one of these bars apart, you know, so don't, you know, try flicking the cage. I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but anyway, you can open it right over here, so that's pretty nifty. If you wanted to take any of your little Groots, you could go ahead and throw them inside there, so now you have a Groot in a cage. This is not the Groot that came with the figure. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And then here's all the regular accessories that come with Yondu. We get nine interchangeable hands along with a set of wrist pegs in case you break a wrist peg. Uh, you get a regular arrow without an effect, we get an arrow with an effect, and then these two other effects pieces. We get two fins, we get a knife, and then we get the baby Groot, or the little Groot, and I like this one. This is from the breakout scene. We're just taking down treacherous ravagers, and I think it looks awesome. I really dig this quite a bit. I love the wood grain sculpt in this. Nice detail right here on his suit and everything. 
Cute little Groot, even the nice silver paint details right there. Looks really good. And for a little comparison, here's the one that came with the deluxe rocket figure, so you can see. Yeah, this one's got a little bit lighter paint color and a little bit of yellow at the top. I think it looks better with the green like this one. So yeah, this is pretty nifty, and it does come with the stand. Uh, you can take them off the stand if you want, so that works out pretty well. Uh, we also get this little knife right here, which I don't remember seeing him hold this or anything, but I like that we get some nice silver paint detail on it. So it's a good looking knife, and it just stores right into his left sleeve. Uh, there is a little placeholder thing in here, so you want to remove that first, which I already did. I don't know where it went, but yeah, you just store the knife right in there, so that is pretty nifty. One thing I want to mention, too, is that the hands look awesome. I love this blue flesh tone that we see, and we're going to see it more on the rest of the figure, but just the little veins and everything on all the hands just looks remarkable. Very pleased with that. Even the fingernails have some nice paint detail on them, so that looks awesome. Uh, looking at one of the arrows, I want to say that I am very, very grateful that Hot Toys included these little safety uh, covers on each of the arrows so that you don't break them. So if you're done playing with your figure, you can just put that right back on there. Uh, but that looks fantastic. I don't need to put my hand back there. I mean, just look at the little details carved in there. That looks really good. Nice silver paint apps. That is pretty sweet. And then for the arrow storage, uh, there's a little holster right here on his hip, and you just slide it through right there, and then you have this little hoop at the bottom, and it's supposed to help keep it in place. And it's kind of tricky to aim for it, but you can see it's not the trickiest thing to do, so yeah. I think I have that all set up right. It looks pretty good. I dig that. And then we get the effects arrow right over here. Again, I put the little sleeve on it. And you can see the little translucent pink coming through right here as well in the back of it too. So I think that looks great. And I like this translucent pink effect. And then we get another piece that has these two hoops going around right here. And then we get this last one. And I'm going to demonstrate how you go ahead and port this onto the figure, uh, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, but one thing I'll get into right now is that when you're putting this together, you want to make sure that you're matching the shapes properly. So there's a distinct uh, little bit of an edge right there in that port. And you can see the edge right over here. So you want to make sure that you play match the shape correctly and that port's together very smoothly and then same deal we get kind of an angled port right here so make sure that that matches correctly and there that goes and as I zoom out you can see that we get this whole effect piece right here which is pretty nifty I like that that's actually pretty cool not too bad and then we get the two fins uh, which we'll get a closer look at in just a minute I guess but here's uh, the prototype I really like the detail on the inside of this that looks amazing and these are magnetized I mean look at that that is so cool I dig that a lot one day I hope to cosplay as Yondu. Got the mohawk ready for it and everything, right? Right? I think that is very cool. Dig this a lot. Then here's the regular fin right here that we'd seen before. Would have been cool to have one that looked like it was lit up or something, but eh, I'm not really tripping off of it. I think these look pretty dope the way they are. I like them. No! Oh! I love this head sculpt. This head sculpt is absolutely amazing. Hot Toys, once again, just killing it with these face sculpts. Uh, this looks just like Michael Rooker's Yondu. That is incredible. I was actually face to face with Michael Rooker on the showroom floor at Comic Con this year. It was kind of a trip his security guard was trying to get through. I didn't realize Rooker was right behind him. I made this joke like, hey, isn't it great when people do this? And I stood right in front of the security guard, turned 90 degrees, and just stared upwards and came to a complete stop. And then I hear that distinctive laugh. <laughs> Oh, that's the worst! And yeah, it was Michael Rooker right there with his sunglasses on and his hat. And I was like, oh shoot, and tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, hey man, love your work. He's like, ah, thank you! So yeah, Michael Rooker, very cool dude. Not the first time I met him. So I was face to face with him at Comic-Con. I'm face to face with him right now. And yeah, that is just dead on Michael Rooker Yondu. I love the details on the side. That looks great. I love the veins that we're seeing throughout too. Oh man, they just got the right amount of white hair right here on his beard. He does have a bit of the gray hair on the beard and everything. The eyes look really good. I guess my only little gripe is that I wish they were a brighter red because they really do stand out as bright red, but they are definitely red. It just could be a little bit brighter. I don't know, if I brighten my settings and then zoom in, you could see how red they are, right? You could see it, right? A little overexposed, but anyway, looking on this side of the head right here, looks really good too. I like all those veins. That paint just looks so good, man. Oh, they just did a great job with this. Again, I love how the fin looks. That is just too awesome. Ah, spectacular work. But anyway, removing the fin, you just pop it off and you can see that we get a magnet right there. 
And then there's another magnet right here. I wish we had a busted fin, you know, that would've been cool to put that put on there. But anyway, here's a look at the prototype fin once again. And yeah, I just think he looks more badass like that. He's a lot more comic accurate with this prototype fin anyway. But now looking at the rest of the figure, oh my goodness, all kinds of great details throughout. I'm not going to talk about every single little thing. There's just so much to talk about here, but you could just clearly see it with your own two eyes how awesome this looks. I love the little arrows over there. These textiles are just very impressive. I am really digging this quite a bit, man. The arms look great. Yeah, we get this suede fabric right here. It feels like suede anyway. That looks really good. And there's that knife again, looking on this side. You kinda wanna be careful with this. I feel like as I interchange the hands, I risk ruining the fabric right here, as always on the Hot Toys. That's pretty neat right there. Got the straps on the inside. I haven't tried removing his jacket at all. I have no desire to want to do that. You can see this is the lining where they insert the bendy wire that goes inside. But nice detail on the inside of the trench coat. This belt right here is pretty loose for me. I don't know, I, I wish it you know, wasn't so bulky. It kind of just loosely goes around the figure, but I don't know. There, I don't, I'm not sure if there's a way to try to tighten that up. It looks like that's just the way it's going to be. The pants look really good on this guy too. Really good looking pants. And again, I like that leathery belt and everything. There's a rooker butt. Then there's a nice lines and everything going throughout. This is really cool. I am very pleased with this. And this material allows for a lot of posability too. So it doesn't just look awesome. You can get them into the poses that you want to get them into. As I mentioned earlier, and these boots are very impressive. I love that subtle wear right here at the bottom of the feet. That is just really cool looking. Very, very impressive. Ah, I dig this thing. This is awesome. Now, I really do like the articulation on this figure, and I think one reason for that is, and I never noticed this before until getting this figure, is that the sleeves on the trench coat are cut off. So these are sleeves from the jacket that he's wearing underneath here. I just really never noticed that before, just till getting this figure. But anyway, you can move the head up very far, which is great, and it will look down quite a bit too. And you also get side-to-side -side motion at the head, and you get great head pivoting, and I just took the fin off. Uh, one one thing I wish I showed earlier, which is actually kind of awesome, is that they do have all the stubble and everything on the neck right there. So that's pretty neat. So yeah, the head and neck are connected as one piece. That looks really good. I like that quite a bit. Uh, we get a butterfly joint right here at the shoulders, and you can move the shoulders outward that far. You can move them down. You could rotate forward that far and back that far. Uh, you get a bicep swivel. We get double jointed elbows, and then the wrist turn side to side, hinge up and down or side to side, depending on how you have that configured. Uh, we get an ab crunch forward and an ab crunch back. Well, that's actually the waist crunch moving back. You can see his undies right there. Uh, so with both joints all together, he'll crunch forward that much and both joints all together, he'll move back that much. With both joints, he'll pivot side to side that far. And of course you get some twisting action right there at the diaphragm and the waist. Uh, we get hip joints that move outward only that far. That would usually bother me, but for this particular character, uh, I don't need him to move his legs in all kinds of crazy dynamic poses. That, that's fine with me. Uh, he can kick forward just that much, and he'll move his legs back just the tiniest bit. He has an upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, then the ankles can move down, they can move up, they're on ball joints, so you can turn them side to side and give them ankle pivot. And this whole shin guard right here is pretty loose, so you can move that around and cover that pin so you don't have that exposed. One thing I didn't really get a close enough look at is this trench coat. I mean, look how much paint detail that we get on the trench coat. That looks amazing. Ah, this figure looks awesome. Oh, and I forgot to go over the bendy wire. So uh, we get a bendy wire that goes all the way up from here to down here on each side of the trench coat. So you could see it could bend all the way up and we get a second wire on this side right here. So you could flip that all the way up as you'd like. So that's pretty cool. That really does help with posability. I like that. Wee, Mary Poppins, y'all. I really like this Yandu figure and I do like this arrow accessory, but the way the directions tell you to get him uh, wearing this thing is that you just port this through here and then you're supposed to get this wrapped around his neck and it's just kind of always pointing downwards for me. I, I just don't like how that looks. So I try to move it further back. It tends to, yeah, it just doesn't really work out. I guess maybe if I scoot this all the way up right here, 
it'll look like the arrow is shooting forward. So you can mess around with it, you can do what you like, but that's how you're supposed to have it displayed, and I just don't think it looks that cool. I just wish the ports that attach right here uh, could be configured in different ways so that you can get different posing options. So that's really the main posing option right there, as the directions say, and I don't think it looks that great. Of course, if you want to, you could you know have this set up in different ways, or you could port it any way you like. Uh, one thing I did that I thought looked kind of neat was I just ported this right through here as you saw towards the beginning of the video, and that looks pretty nifty to me. I kind of like that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I do like this. It's just, I, I wish they had done something a little bit different with it. I do like that we get this little hoop right here, so it makes it easy for him to hold his trench coat open while he's doing that. And then another gripe of mine is getting the jetpack on here, which is not fun to do. Again, it's the same as the Star-Lord jetpack, and it's very hard to get that ported on there. You want to untab right here, and you're going to untab on the other side, too. You can see it's pretty stiff. Oh, okay, that didn't sound good. I hope nothing broke. And then you want to take these pieces out from the back right here, and that all comes apart. So let's see if anything broke. It looks like nothing's broken, even though it totally sounded like something broke. And then you just take the jetpack and you put it right on back there. And then we're going to take the front piece, and it's really tricky to do. Uh, I tend to do this in my lap. It's just a little bit easier, but you kind of want to bend the plastic outward, and you're just going to go underneath the armpits, and I hate doing this because I feel like I'm going to damage the figure one way or another, and you got to try to just basically line those holes up with that top section with the top of the jetpack right here. Now what I do is I'll go ahead and put these through the little slots right here on the back side, and I'll try to do the same thing over here on this side too, and make sure I'm not pinching the trench coat because I don't want to ruin that awesome trench coat. And I'll just leave it like that. I'll forget porting these two things right in here. I'll just leave it like that. And that looks kind of cool. I did take some pictures of him with this, so that'll work, but it's just not my favorite having him with this jetpack on. Even though it does look kind of neat, but I don't know. I wish they had a different system for this. Now to measure out this Yondu figure, while well, he has that prototype fin on there, you can see to the top of the fin, it's at about 13, 13 and a half inches tall. To the top of his head, just a little over 12 inches. And then here's Yondu next to the only other two Hot Toys Guardians Volume 2 figures I have in my collection. We have the 1-1 scale Baby Groot, and we have the Deluxe Rocket, which I'm debating whether or not I should keep. I don't know. I do have the Teen Groot Rocket 2-pack pre-ordered, so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this figure or not, but I do like it, and he's holding that Deluxe Yondu gun. You know, looks pretty good. And then for your father-son figure comparison, we have Yondu next to Star-Lord from Guardians Volume 1, and you can see the trench coat colors are very different. Well, not very different, just a bit lighter right here on the Volume 1 Star-Lord. Uh, again, I wish I had that Volume 2 Star-Lord to compare, but hey, I, I do like this figure a lot. And then here's the Hot Toys Yondu next to the only other MCU Yondu figure I have in my collection. We have the Marvel Legends Yondu. And two things I'm noticing about this Marvel Legend figure that I wish we had with this Yondu right here is that I wish we had an alternate whistling head sculpt. That would have been great to have a whistling Yondu. Also, you can see the eyes, well, maybe you can't see because it's so far away, but the eyes are a bit brighter red than they are on this figure right here. And then here's Yondu next to your average 6 inch scale figure we have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. I gotta give you guys a big thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it when you guys spend your time hanging out with me on this YouTube channel. It really means a lot when you watch the videos all the way from the beginning to the end, even if there's no stop motion in it. And I appreciate it when you hit that like button, as well as leave your comment down below letting me know what you think of the figure. Let me know what you think of this review. And please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell if you have not already. This Yondu figure is awesome. I really dig it a lot. Lot, but then I have my gripes. Uh, this effect is just not working well for me. I, I'm not the biggest fan of this effect. I wish they had it angled out in a way where it was, you know, shooting upward. I really tried hard, you know, moving that belt up so that it could look like it was shooting, you know, kind of in a higher position, but it's just going to be pointing downward. I did flip that last piece upside down and it can work, but there's a bit of gappage from doing that. So, yeah, there's some frustrations with that effect. That's really my biggest gripe with the figure. I do wish that he had a whistling head sculpt, but I'm not that bummed out about it because I really like the head sculpt that we do have. So I really do like this figure a lot, even though I do have some minor gripes with it. Well, uh, the effect piece isn't, you know, that's a full-on complaint. That's not a minor gripe. Regardless, I'm giving this thing a sud rating of... I love it! Because I still think it's an awesome looking effect. 
you know, and it's a great looking figure. I really like the articulation. It looks awesome. Had a lot of fun with it, and I hope you guys once again had fun watching my review. If you'd like to see a photo gallery of images, you can check it out over at MarvelousNews.com, as well as the forums over there at MarvelousNews.com. Be sure to check those out. And if you want to stay in touch with me over on the social media, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Links to everything I talked about in the description below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Hey, let me show Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't. I, I,